Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright out there. So, as I make lots of videos to help people get onto motorcycles, I often get asked about motorcycle insurance and how do I get cheap insurance. Most of the people asking this are obviously newbies because they don't get how insurance works. So I thought I'd make this quick video for the newbies to explain what things affect the cost of your insurance and what you can adjust to try and change the cost of your insurance. So the two main things that are taken into account that then have subcategories are you and the bike. Now for you, there's a few things they're going to take into account. Your age, your gender, if you have any points on your existing license or what level of license you hold at the time, whether that be, say, a full license or a CBT. Your location, as in where you live in the country. People who live in London will know how much more expensive motorcycle insurance has become since all of the crime relating to motorcycles and bikes getting stolen. Your job. Your occupation can make a big difference. So your age, your gender, your license level, your location and your job will all have effects on your insurance. What will also have effects on your insurance is things that you choose, such as the level of coverage that you choose will affect the insurance. The cheapest one is third party only. This won't cover your bike in an accident with another vehicle. It's only going to pay for their car. It won't cover you for theft. It won't cover you for a fire and it won't cover you if you crash into something on your own. Your bike is not covered. It's only covering the damages you cause to other people. Then you have third party fire and theft. That means you can crash into people. You can't crash into people. Try not to, but you know what I'm saying. You're covered for crashing into third persons and it covers their, inst their stuff. You're covered if your bike is destroyed by fire and you're covered if your bike is stolen. So theft, that's what third party fire and theft is. Then you have fully comprehensive, which is much more expensive and that covers you for everything, basically. If you drop the bike or crash the bike on your own without anyone else being involved, you can claim on your insurance. Don't advise doing that unless it's an expensive bike that you absolutely do do that with. If you've got a 125 and you crash it on your own and you, I don't know, cause two, 300 quids worth of damage to the bike, don't claim on the insurance. Fix it yourself. Another thing you have to select is if you're covered for social and pleasure riding, social pleasure and commuting, which means going to work, one place of work, or business cover. Business cover allows you to go to multiple places of work. So say, for instance, you're a freelance uh, lighting engineer and you have to go to different theatres if you go to different theatres regularly you have to get business cover if you work in one theatre and you always go there then your commuting cover is enough your insurance history is also taken into account in other words have you had any crashes recently or have you crashed a lot uh, they only ask you about in the last five years when you apply for insurance I don't honestly know whether they can take uh, crashes outside of that time into account I'd like to say they can't, but I have a feeling they can, but maybe, I don't know. But yeah, if, in, if you've got a crash in the past five years or, or points or something, that's going to have an effect on it. You have your no claims bonus, which is only valid up to seven years. No claims bonus is basically if you do not claim in a year, they give you one. And if you don't claim for, claim for two years, you get two and so on and so forth. So I actually technically have like 12, 13 years no claims bonus but only the first seven are going to take effect and give you a discount. Now, I've been told by some people that no claims bonus actually has little to do with your end um, insurance cost, because if you look at all of this other stuff and you ignore this, it didn't make a huge amount of difference, but it seems to be like a magic combination for individual people to find a good price. You also have the excess. This is an amount of money that you will pay to use your insurance, basically. So say you have a claim of £2,000, and your excess is 800, you're gonna to have to pay them 800 pounds to get them to do the work. The higher that excess is, the lower the cost of your insurance generally, because if you do use it, you're gonna to have to pay a lot more. I'd also like to point out that this is excess and not access. It's an E, not an A. You're not accessing your insurance, it's the excess you're paying. So these are the things from you. Now, the bike. So you have the model of the bike. Obviously, that's going to affect what CC it is, how much it's worth, all sorts of things like that. It's obviously a huge part of it of how much your insurance is going to cost is how much your bike is worth. Is it a £1,000.125 or is it a 14k 1,000cc sports bike? But types of bike are more expensive than others. So I'm actually having the model of the bike separate to its value. The things that affect the value of the bike obviously the starting point but how old is it now 
and what sort of mileage has it got on it. If you have a new expensive bike with low miles, then the value is going to be very high. If it's an old bike with low miles, it might be a medium value. But if it's an old bike with loads of miles, then it's going to be a lot less. What if it's a new bike with tons of miles? Then again, it's going to be different. So the model of the bike, the value and the mileage are all sort of interplaying. One of the questions they're going to ask you is where are you going to keep the bike at night? If you say on the road, it's going to be more expensive than if you said in your driveway, which will be more expensive than if you said in your garage, which is locked and has, you know, decent security and all that sort of stuff. That is going to have an effect on the cost of your insurance because it's much easier for a bike to be stolen when it's on a road, not in your locked garage. And obviously most bike thefts happen at night, so it's, it's taken into account. Now, to my understanding, this doesn't mean your bike's not insured on, in your driveway during the day or even at night. It's where is it kept at night most of the time. Uh, if you go to a friend's house, for instance, and stay there and leave it on the road and it gets stolen, they're not going to turn around and say, well, it wasn't in your garage, so it's not covered. And then the security is in what things does your bike have? Does it have a tracker? Does it have an immobilizer? Does it have a steering lock? Does it, do you have extra locks? But there's a thing to know about extra locks. If you say that your bike has an alarm, immobilizer, steering lock, and you have a big chain, for instance, and your bike is stolen and the steering lock's not on and the chain's not on it, they may not cover you. It's very dependent, but they want you to be using all of the security devices that you said you had when you set up your insurance. So if you want to go down the road of telling them what security devices you're going to use, you will need to use those to be sure every time, generally. But as much as insurance companies can be complete gremlins, they also aren't entirely unfair at times, but they can also be very unfair. So it's why you need to just cover your own back. So as you can see, when it comes to the bike itself, it's pretty obvious, you know, the, the value of the bike is taken into account by what it is, how old it is, how many miles it's got and stuff like that. Where you keep it at night and the security for it makes perfect sense. So then the question comes, how do you get cheaper insurance? Number one rule is to shop around. Doing online comparisons is great, but I believe you can get better deals when you call them directly and go through the legwork of, you know, talking to them. That's the way I found anyway. But shopping around for a good deal is the best thing you can do. Also note that certain bikes, like Chinese bikes, some companies prefer to insure those than others. For instance, I used to be insured with Rampdale because they specialised in Chinese bikes at a time that other companies didn't even know what they were. That isn't quite the case these days, but by shopping around, I went from, well, Asda said they wanted £7,000, and I think I paid about eight or 900 to Ramdale. So, yeah. Be as qualified as you can license level-wise, but if you only can be on a CBT, you can only be on a CBT. Don't buy a four or five grand bike and spend all of your money on that and then not leave any money over for your, your insurance. Get a cheaper bike. It will cost you less on insurance. It will cost you less on parts, and it you know, you can't lose as much money on a cheaper bike. If you have options about where you store it at night, do this. I do think that has a big effect on the price. If you do all of these things and the price that comes out at the end is a lot, I'm afraid that's just the case because insurance is not cheap. A lot of people seem to think if they buy a two grand bike, they're going to spend like 200 quid in insurance or something. If you're like 17, you buy a two grand bike, you're going to be paying at least a grand if you went fully comp, at least. So it's a lot of money you have to take into account. There are, of course, other factors they take into account, but in my experience, and from my knowledge, these are the most important ones. And hopefully, if you adjust all these things the best way you can, and if you think about you know, your budget before you buy your bike, you should be able to afford your insurance, and within a couple of years, it's going to start coming down. If you can get on to do your proper license, as in a full license, say you're on a CBT, you go and do the A1 instead of doing a repeat CBT because it's actually cheaper than doing the CBT if you do the tests directly, roundabout, uh, that can bring your insurance costs down. So there you go. I hope you found that useful. Please like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new here. Support on Patreon if you can. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.